Welcome to our final youth service this afternoon. The Lord bless you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the prelude so far. We thank God for the um, trio, um, our Manchester um, trio, the ladies who played, followed by the orchestra, two pieces, All Heaven Declares and Hosanna. And then choir, Jesus is mine. And we know that perhaps if there are some people here this afternoon who cannot say that with reassurance that Jesus is theirs, by the end, if not by the end, even during the service, Jesus can be yours. Amen. And we know that he is able to save, to sanctify, to baptize, to heal, and to keep. Amen. And we trust in that he will continue to bless us. Amen. And then we also had a clarinet solo um, from Dami. Can I ask Dami to come forward, please? Okay. Um, Dami played um, Here I Am to Worship, and um, I heard, shall I say, Little Bird told me that, where are you? Come <laughs> um, I was told that today's your birthday. Yeah. How old are you? Twelve. He's twelve. So, um, can we sing happy birthday for Dami? continue our service by um, singing a few congregational songs before congregational prayers and our song leader this afternoon is Rotary. Our first song we'll sing is Bless the Lord, O My Soul, after introduction.
says, the Lord's my shepherd. We will sing two verses of this song. before prayer because the Lord is our shepherd we know that all we need to do is be still and we'll see what God will do our next song is be still and know that I am God we'll sing verse 1 2 and 4 this song We, we adore you. Amen. Jesus, we just want to declare that we love you today. Amen. Thank you for your grace. Amen. Thank you for your love towards us. Amen. Thank you for Calvary, Lord. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful blood, Jesus, Amen. that still washes away sin today. 
And Lord, as we look to you in this service, oh God, our praise that you come and save. Lord, come and sanctify our hearts. Lord, fill us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Heal the sick among us, oh Lord. Let the preaching of this gospel, oh Lord, be followed by signs and wonders. We're grateful, oh Lord, for camp meeting, oh God. Some of us may have stepped out of the way, oh Lord. Our prayer this afternoon, Jesus, is that you draw us back, oh God. We just want to turn back to you, Lord, and follow you all the way, Jesus. Bless the rest of this service and let everything be done to the glory of your name. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we thank God for the camp meeting so far, and we thank God for this last youth camp. Um, youth service, I meant to say, no, youth camp, this last youth service. You know, Sister Holos already welcomed all of us into this. Our announcement remains the same as we heard them this morning. So let's um, remind ourselves of the time of the services as listed in the leaflets that we have. Um, at the end of this announcement, I'm not going to go over them again because of um, time, because I want many of us to have opportunity to give a shout unto the Lord. So we'll sing a song now. Um, he has done great things is the song. I've been told that a few times and I keep forgetting. Please pardon me. Um, it, he has done great things. At the end of that song, there will be room for testimonies. You've got a lot of time. It's 120 seconds. Um, the moment you get over that, I'm sure the organist will be ready. Um, once the organist starts playing, it's, a, it's an indication for you to wrap up your testimony and just give glory to God and sit down. God bless you. He has done great things, he has done great things, he has done great things, bless his holy name. He has done great things, he has done great things, he has done great things, bless his holy name. come to the UK. I want to thank God who has given me the opportunity to be in the UK camp. It has always been my dream, but also at the same time, something that well, I was like, no, this can never happen. I even forgot that with God, all things are possible. He had to remind me that Lame with me, all things are possible. And for that, I'm so grateful. I want to thank God who saved my soul when I was still 19 years old. By that time, I was going to the city for our school. And I was so excited. I had my own plans, but God just messed up my plans. He saved my soul. And for that, I'm so, 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 so grateful. He kept me when I was living far away from my parents. I, I, I don't regret. I don't regret. And one thing I want to thank God for today is what he has done for me this year. It's been a year, I think, that I've been telling myself that I lost the value of my salvation. I had started giving excuses for everything that I've... I've start, I started giving excuses of, for not participating at church. I had dropped... I had my, my prayer level had gone so low and my love for God and the zeal that I had had just gone so low. And it was just this... This year, April, when I went for the camp the, in Zambia, and the theme was the great repairer. When I got there, God, remind, God showed his faithfulness to me. He just showed me that, Lame, you had not lost the value of your salvation. You have lost it all. And for that, I'm so grateful to God for. God has restored my joy. God has restored my love for him. And my desire is to work for him till he comes. And if... And when he comes, I want to make heaven my home. Amen. I want to thank God for saving me and sanctifying me. In the children's church, I knew that it was an opportunity to get saved. And I didn't know that I was going to get sanctified. 
I prayed um, with David and Uncle Banji, and it was one hour and a half I was praying for, and at the end, um, God saved, um, saved me, and also he sanctified me, and I'm grateful for that. And helping me through all of my exams. I thank God for saving my soul. Um, uh, at the end, for my end of year um, tests, um, there was this really difficult test. And out of 100%, I scored 70%. And I just thank God for helping me. Um, I want to also thank God for, um, he took me to Portland and he brought me back safely. Um, at Portland, that's where I got saved, sanctified, and he also baptized me. Um, yesterday, um, it was the women's meeting thing, but I wanted to watch a movie instead. But then afterwards, I did come back to um, the meeting, but afterwards I felt bad because I was like, instead of being with the godly woman, I wanted to do something else. And I came back on the altar, I was like, God, like, if I've, like, I'm sorry for not putting you first. And um, please show me that you're still with me. And um, that's, it was last night he re-anointed me. Um, yeah, and I'm just so thankful for everything he's done in my life. Even for listening to my small prayers, like, I'm not anything, but he still listens to me. So, yeah. Saving me because of, I just, lo, maybe it's last year, but I'm not sure. But I was throwing up and I didn't like it very much. I'm in the middle of the line and my belly was aching me. I didn't know what was wrong with me. So, so my auntie said I should drink water, but it was in Coventry, but I couldn't. And I wasn't really feeling well. My head was hot. I had a belly ache and different type of things. Then she prayed for me, and then I thank God in the morning, I was, I was better. I want to thank God this afternoon because God is just so faithful. I want to thank God that um, I still have a testimony. I, I thank God for the opportunity to be born in a Christian home. I thank God that at a point God real, um, showed me that I, I needed to make a decision for myself. And I thank God that he helped me. I prayed and he saved my soul. He sanctified me and he filled me with his Holy Spirit. I thank God that as a young person, he provided a great husband for me in this gospel. He blessed us with children. I thank God that I haven't always been the best example of a Christian, but each time he sees me and he sees my heart, he's just always there to lift me up. I thank God that this year um, I applied for jobs and instead of one, God gave me two. And um, I had to go back and I was like, Lord, what do, which one do I go for? You know, and, and he helped me make a decision. I thank God that um, just about two weeks before the camp meeting, God delivered my husband from an accident. Um, I, I don't know what the story would have been. I don't know how I'd have explained myself, but um, I'm just so, so grateful to God. I thank God that I came into this um, camp meeting this year quite despondent, quite um, depressed, and um, quite discouraged about a few things. But I thank God that God always knows how to encourage his own. And I thank God that today he has put a smile on my face. Um, I'm just so grateful for everything that the Lord has done, and I just pray that I'll be faithful to the end. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank God for sanctifying me and also for giving me the Holy Ghost baptism. I want to thank God this afternoon for my studies, for how he's been helping me. It's been uh, difficult, but I thank God for his help with my exams. You know, I, um, when it's getting towards the exam time, I'm always scared because I don't revise all through the year. I make my, I start to prepare for the exam a few weeks before the actual exam. So I thank God for, um, helping me uh, last year when I did my second year examinations. It went well and I came out with the first class. Um, I want to thank God for provision and protection. I travel a lot. I thank God for how he's been protecting me. Sometimes when I'm driving, I'm almost gone, but I just thank God for protecting me. Uh, I want to give him all the praises this afternoon.
you have to wait for but when you don't know when you're going or when you're staying it can be a lot you know it can be quite distressing and I waited the first month I thought no it's August so I waited August came and left September and you know it was towards the end of October by that time I was drained practically but I'm thankful to the Lord that for every day I had I waited then the Lord has paid I don't know how many folds he's just blessed me so much I moved out to Botswana to start my job and I am just so thankful that I can say I love my job a lot I mean I can't imagine doing anything else I'm just so thankful that the Lord made it possible for me to be here today it's just a miracle because if you asked me this question 48 hours ago or something I would have not been able to tell you what I was doing but I'm so thankful to the Lord that he's still in the business of rotten miracles i'm thankful that he answers prayers dami and deji were praying for me you know everyone my mentors were praying i'm thankful you know that you have ministers who who love you and genuinely have your interest at heart the pastor would call me text me and tell me he was praying for me and those prayers the lord has used them a lot to really encourage me i'm just so thankful that i'm standing today that i am still standing it is because jesus is alive i want to go all the way with him please pray for me i want to give glory and honor to god for everything that he has done for me um thank god first of all that i'm safe i want to thank god for um just taking us to UK, just being here, being able to be in the UK, camp meeting. I, I want to give God um, the glory for you know taking me to my job, just going every, just going anywhere, just keeping me safe. And I want to give the glory to God for healing me. About like two Sundays ago, I was sick. I wasn't feeling well. I just started throwing up and stuff. But you know, um, I like my parents prayed for me and I prayed as well. And I uh, you know that that God healed me the, the next day. I want to give the glory and honor to God. Amen. I want to tell God thank you for everything He's done for me. Amen. For salvation. Amen. For salvation. Amen. Um, ideally, in this camp, I didn't plan to testify because I just said, I just want to be unknown. I just want to just um, be on my own and um, see how things go. But um, God did draw out conviction out of me. He said, yeah, you need to tell you need to praise me and um, I made a vow yesterday night I said I'm going to praise you Amen. and I'm paying my vow tonight today I want to tell God for everything he's done for me um, he married for me he gave me a job um, he kept me at my job I remember last year um, planning for car meeting um, we were thinking we might not be able to make it because um, the oil and gas industry had some downturn 
and um, a lot of things happened. I also faced redund I almost faced redundancy. I was called for that, but God kept me in my job. Um, I'm still there. <laughs> it's, it's quite surprising. Um, God has done a lot for us. Um, even in my family, God has done a lot for us. He's been our guide. He's been our everything. Um, I think I've just got a message for young people that they are thinking to marry. Um, I know it might look difficult, you know, like, yeah, stay with somebody that you don't know. But God will help you through the journey. Um, sincerely, um, the journey for me, it's God's help. God has been the one. He's fought our life battles for us. There have been times where we've been like, how did we get here? But God has really helped us. You know, and I, I want to encourage someone that God will help you. Bless the Lord with my soul. I want to thank God for the opportunity to testify today. Um, I, I thank God for saving me, sanctifying me, and baptizing me with the Holy Spirit. It's not always been that way. I've been um, wayward. I've been, I was born in the gospel, but, you know, uh, as, as, as it goes, I've, I've, been, I've do, done things that I'm, I, I'm not proud of. Um, but God cornered me up. I, at this camp meeting, it was about five years, six years ago now, and God saved me and you. I can honestly plot a, a, a graph of all the great milestones in my life to, be, to coincide with when I got close to God. So um, I just wanted to testify today to give um, hope and, and a, a first-hand uh, you know, um, experience to p people, youths, that you know, when we get close to God, it, it, there's no losing out. God has blessed me in more ways than I can imagine. You know, if you think you're successful in your own way, what you're doing, you haven't seen nothing yet. When you get close to God, God will bless you mightily. There's no, in, in my family, health-wise, materially, he's done so much for me. I, 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 started doing a, um, it was, I, I started doing a professional exam about um, maybe close to 10 years ago now, and I did it about seven times. It was in August of 2011, after I got saved, that I passed it. Amen. You know, I, 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 got a, I got a very good job in 2011 that I've been in since then, till uh, 2010 rather, but I've, I've been in so many renewal, contract renewals, and every time they renew my contract, I get paid more money, more money, more money. And I finished that contract. God just told, Spirit told me, I, I need to move on, move on to something else. And I left there in faith last year. And it, it, it felt like it was going to be, I told God to, do, to pray for me, I need a job. It felt like it was going to be difficult. That, I mean, this is not happening. It's not happening like I thought it, I thought it was, I'm a hot, I'm hot cake. It's just going to happen like that. God just wanted me to pray more. We had a, a, a month-long prayer time this, uh, this January. And during that time, God answered my prayer. He's done so, much, so many things for me. He's helped me to grow in more ways I can imagine. I can just say to you, young people, please get close to God and all your dreams, everything will be actualized. And God will bless you. Um, I want to thank God today because he saved me, sanctified me, and renewed me at this coming meeting. I also want to um, thank God because after every service, I've literally been blessed. And um, for the little things that we do, I thank God that he sees the heart only because even with stage fright, God is merciful. But anyway, I want to thank God for everything he's done in my life. I want to thank God for saving my soul, uh, sanctifying me, filling with the Holy Ghost and fire. Um, when God saves, he actually saves. Um, if you had met me eight years ago, you wouldn't recognize me just because I had dreadlocks, uh, I had a massive beard, I was just lost. Uh, but when God caught me up, he actually just dealt with all of it. Um, ever since then, my life changed completely. Uh, God just put me on a new path, you know, and God just kept on blessing me, you know, taking me higher and higher. And I just want to thank God for what he's done for me recently. Um, when I went to uni, I went to uni to study one degree, and I graduated uh, just a couple of weeks ago with two degrees instead. Uh, all first class and I just don't know how God did it for me but he did it um, I want to thank God for the power of provision um, God just provides for me in so many ways I can't describe financially God just keeps me up like the word broke doesn't really exist in my dictionary just because I trust in God that God keeps on blessing me and just provides from you know nowhere so I encourage someone tonight that you know serving God isn't boring serving God isn't something that you know that's gonna change your life for the you know 
negative, but for the positive. You know, just try God today and you'll see what God will do for you. I'd like to thank God for saving me this year youth camp. Um, after God saved me, I literally thought the road would be so easy because for me, there was no excuse for me to get saved because I've always told myself things have been going so well for me that what, what is the reason for me to get saved? But since I got saved, God has done so much to me. Uh, particularly, I want to thank God for my job. My job requires me to travel quite a lot to different cities. And I recently got involved in this project. Didn't know, didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was doing roughly 65 hours a week. It was, just, it was just draining to start skiing. Whenever someone makes a similar mistake to me, they'll call, they'll call them outside and say, you're not longer needed again. Go back to your parents' company. And I'll go to the toilet and say, Lord, why, is, why did that not happen to me? Why, why can't they not tell me just to go back home or back to my parents' company? This is just draining. This is task skiing. But God assured me. And God kept on allowing me to keep going. I keep getting positive feedback from my managers. I'm like, are they seeing what I'm doing? Do they know? Is this feedback for me? Is this feedback for someone else? But Lord has blessed me so much a job even when I do not deserve promotion when I do not deserve pay rise God gives it to me I particularly also want to thank God because of the food I eat I eat breakfast from outside lunch outside dinner outside someone could easily poison me someone could easily do something to my food sometimes when the food gets delivered to me I open it I'm like I have no idea what what chef has cooked it what, what has been in but I just have to just eat the food and just thank God honestly because sometimes I just think that someone could easily have a bad day and decide to decided to poison the food or something, but I just thank God for all these little things he does for me. I give all God the praise.
I'm reading from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10, verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. We thank God for this camp meeting. I heard Sister Ollie say this is our final youth service. But it's not final yet. It's not over yet until it's over. There are souls to be saved. There are souls to be sanctified. There are souls to be baptized with the Holy Ghost of fire. There are souls which need to be revived. There are people who need to be visited. And God is going to help us this afternoon. Amen. And it is my prayer that all these testimonies we have been hearing, if you haven't had a testimony yet, God is going to give you a testimony. Amen. God is going to give you a testimony this afternoon. And I believe that the God who saved me is going to save you this afternoon. Amen. When I read from the book of Mark, verse 47, this man was the blind Bartimaeus. If we started from verse 46, it says, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind but meals, and the son of Temius, sat, sat by the waste highway side, begging. And 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out loud, Say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, and a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what is your discouragement. I don't know which is holding you back. But blind but mules, he never saw Jesus. He just heard about Jesus. When he heard about Jesus, and people knew him as a blind man, they even gave him name according to the situation he had. Don't worry. If people are giving you names according to the situation you are, they might call you you're a sinner. They might call you you're this or that. Or your case is written off. But this afternoon, Amen. cry out the more. Amen. Don't look to the people who are charging you to say, no, don't go. Who are discouraging you not to get saved. Who are telling you or who are laughing at you. Our Redeemer liveth. Amen. I was talking to the audiovisual this afternoon. And they say this is the 12th sermon. One, two, three, up to 11th sermon. They've gone through. Have they changed your life? Has it changed my life? 
but it's not over yet. It might be 12 sermon, but Jesus is passing by. Jesus is here. As he walked and entered in the, uh, in the city of Jericho, he's here in Kevin Lee. He's interested with one soul. We learned about excuses. But today, this sermon is all about time to act. Time to act. We need to do something. If there's anything challenging in your life, if there's anything which is posing danger in your life, you need to act. Blind but Muse knew that it was the right time to act. When you act, you take initiative. When you act, you do something about it. Oh, Jesus is ready. But he needs you to take initiative. Blind Bartimaeus took initiative. Let's hear what he says. 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man. He's still being called a blind man because of his situation. But Jesus is not seeing the blind man. Jesus is seeing blind Bartimaeus. Seeing again. Amen. God is seeing you this afternoon as a safe soul. Amen. God is seeing you this afternoon as a sanctified soul. Amen. God is seeing you this afternoon as a baptized soul. God is seeing you this afternoon as a healed soul. Amen. Revived soul. Amen. But it only takes an action. It only takes an initiative. Take advantage of this place. Take advantage of these altar benches. And Jesus is going to do it. Amen. And I believe and I've seen and I've prayed with other people who have been testifying that God changed their lives. Amen. May Jesus help us. We are told Jesus stood still. Jesus is ready to stand still. Amen. Jesus is ready to listen to you. Amen. Jesus is saying, I'm standing still to listen to you. Irregardless what is surrounding you. What, what, what is regarding your actions or what, whatever people are discouraging you. Jesus is saying, I'm standing still. Amen. Into that your challenge. And when he stood still, he listened to blind but me. Yeah. May God help us. Amen. God is going to listen to us Amen. too. Amen. And they called the blind man, 50, and he said, Casting, sorry, I'll take it that again. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of a good comfort. Rise, he called thee. Fifty. And he, casting away his garments, rose and came to Jesus. I believe we all, we've just made a good initiative to come to this service. To come to Jesus, who is the one going to address all our challenges? 50. You know, there's something happens when Jesus says something. 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will, what will thou that I should do unto thee? What is that you want God to do to you? What is that you want me, you want God to help you with? 
Jesus is asking a question. He's not asking me. He's asking you. Imply by Timios. Answered. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That I might receive my sight. You know, if you are not saved, you are just like somebody who doesn't know what he's doing. You might think that you are the man, or you think you are, you are the lady of the, of the time. But you are nothing. You are like a blind person who doesn't know where he's going. And blind but meals knew his problem. It is my prayer this afternoon that God will direct you to know your problem. Amen. The simple answer is if you are not saved, you are in a problem. If you are not saved, you are in a problem. What you have to do is to receive your sight. Like what Blood by Timius did. This story challenges me. Sometimes we sit around as if things are all right, but things are not all right when Jesus is not in your heart. Blind but Jesus, thou that I might receive my sight. 52. And Jesus said unto him, Jesus is listening, Jesus is knowing. What you are going through, what I am going through. And Jesus said unto you, Go thy way. Thy faith, thy faith. Amen. Some of this, uh, you know, when you are seeking for salvation, it doesn't need any critical analysis, it doesn't need any want to really explain to you. But it needs somebody to have that contrite heart and a broken spirit. But Jesus, here I come. I'm a wretched sinner. I know my problem. I know what I need. May God deliver us. Some of us have been coming in and out, year in, year out. But nothing has happened. But today, the last youth service, the 12th sermon, there are more to come, but you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. We are waiting for this afternoon. As I step down, Please, may God help you Amen. to point, to give pointers to those things which are holding you, not to get saved. It's all about salvation here. Yeah. It's all about baptism of Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. It's all about sanctification. Amen. That's our bread and butter. Amen. We will not preach another gospel. Amen. Our gospel will lead us home. Amen. Our gospel will lead us to heaven. Amen. Our gospel will not make us celebrities. But our gospel is to stand for Christ. Yeah. May God open our eyes. Yeah. May God open our spiritual eyes. Yeah. I'm not a better person standing in front of you. But God has done it. Yeah. I was a wretched sinner. I wasn't born in the gospel. But it was when the sermon came, I said, Jesus, I am a sinner. Save me. Amen. And it was instant. Amen. Like the same way blind Bartimaeus received his, his sight. It was an instant. We deal with instant cases here. That's what we do. 
And God will help us. Amen. And God will help us to pray. Amen. And immediately, he received his sign. Imagine those people who were charged not to go to Jesus. Don't worry about those people. They saw what Jesus can do. And, and those people, and those situations, which can lead you not to get closer to Jesus, they are going to testify the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And follow Jesus in the way. May God deliver us. Amen. You know, our God, when he does things, he makes them permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He makes them permanent. Yeah. Imagine blind but muse. Never knew maybe what color Jesus was wearing or whatever. He never went to an extent to say, is it real Jesus you are talking about? Because I haven't seen him. But he only heard. So as the sermons come, as I preach, as I speak, I'm praying that God will come and deliver me. As he deliver you, let me deliver me as well. Yes. And God will help you. Yes. What is that challenge in you? God is saying, I'm standing still. I'm ready to listen. Will you come to God and talk to God? God knows your situation. You know your situation. Like what he did to blind Bartimaeus. He's saying he's ready. And immediately... God is going to help you. Let us come to Jesus and God will help us as we pray on our altars. The altars are open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master, for this opportunity that you have given us. We are on bended knees. Lord, come down and save our soul. Come down and sanctify us. Come down and fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Come down and heal us, Lord. Come down and deliver us, Lord. Like, oh, Bartimaeus, Lord, make us whole. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.